This is Witchbase News for Friday the 2nd of August 2024. I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous News this week. We've been exploring an early access version of the incoming engineering update and have some real world results to share on what a difference it will make. I'll also share some thoughts on just why FDev might be making these changes. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. Just a quick bit of clarification before we get cracking today. On our video earlier this week we showed some footage of me walking up the ramp of a Type 8 toward the door and there was no blue tunnel of despair visible that you would normally expect to see waiting at the bottom of the ramp. This led to a degree of confusion and speculation about how you enter the ship and ship interiors etc. So just to be clear all our footage on this channel is filmed by my wife Commander Rini. It was me walking walking up the ramp but whilst we were in a team at the time the Type 8 is a single seater vessel and therefore no tunnel of disappointment would be visible from her perspective anyway. As you can see from the footage on screen now the tunnel is very much present from the ship owners perspective but the ramp is also sized correctly and there are no colliders preventing you from going right up to the door at the top. As you'll almost certainly know by now on the monthly Frontier Unlocked livestream on Wednesday this week Frontier dropped the first solid details on the long promised and much anticipated engineering rebalance that is arriving next week in what FDev are calling the Type 8 update. Alongside it will also be some new pre-built ship options, the Type 8 freighter itself in early access and the Python Mark II coming out of early access and becoming available for just credits in game. If you missed our detailed breakdown of everything packed into the Type 8 update then you'll find it linked on screen now. To say the update is a significantly important one feels like a huge understatement and I say that in full and clear knowledge that 2024 is a year packed with significantly important updates for Elite Dangerous. The numbers quoted for material drops by FDev and the changes quoted on the livestream coming to the engineering process itself are just part of the equation and how those numbers and processes stack up in the actual game is of course important. Elite is a big game and the changes spread across all the available materials, POIs, modules, ships, weapons, suits, blueprints and engineers etc is quite complex and it would be impossible for us to encompass it all in a video that is short enough for you to view while still maintaining relationships with your loved ones as well as keeping up with things like personal hygiene. However with the access that we have to the content creators preview build we can show a definite flavour of the changes coming to the game some of which I suspect you may find quite startling. The changes FDev are making are quite nuanced in places particularly when it comes to accessing some rarer materials but in other places as you'll see in a moment it's like someone backed up a truckload of mats and covered your driveway. Overall as a very top level overview what you'll find is more missions in starports and settlements both ship and on foot based that offer materials as a reward. The variety and type of those materials has been increased. In some cases and I stress only in some the amounts of the materials rewarded have increased. In a number of instances but again importantly not right across the board the increase has been quite significant. When it comes to on foot mats gaining reputation with a faction is going to be more important going forward than perhaps it has been. I found significant material increases were open to me when negotiating a price with an NPC at a starport when I had an excellent rep with their supported faction. But we'll dig into some examples now and then I'll give you my thoughts on what I think I'm seeing from Frontier at the end. When it comes to ships here are three examples of mission boards and the materials being offered. One for straightforward missions and then two flavours of passenger missions. As you can see there's a fairly wide variety of manufactured, encoded and also raw materials. 
but the numbers being rewarded are not huge by any stretch of the imagination. However it's important that those numbers are taken in the wider context of how the engineering process has changed and in particular the acquisition of things like the infamous pharmaceutical isolator. In this next piece of video you can see me taking a brand new SCO capable FSD and adding increased range to it. The rolls are completely predictable and, as I have Grade 5 unlocked with Felicity Farseer, the scale is completely linear. One roll for Grade 1, two rolls for Grade 2, three rolls for Grade 3 etc. And this is mirrored right across the ship engineering spectrum. It's a sliding scale while you unlock a given upgrade path but it's still a predictable one and then once you hit G5 it's the same linearity demonstrated here. To eke out those last few pixels of an engineering project you will now be significantly less frustrated. It still strikes me that it will require time in the game, it won't for the most part be raining materials but it should be significantly less painful. With that said there are important occasions where you'll witness an absolute deluge and I'm not talking about grade 1 mats here, I'm talking about grade 5. Case in point what follows will be particularly dramatic for anyone who has ever gone seeking pharmaceutical isolators from a high grade emission source. In the T8 build we currently have access to I went looking for pharmaceutical isolators to get a raw example of how hard or difficult it might be in Frontiers Brave New World. To give some important context here I used no external tools whatsoever. I was in Shinrata at the time and I filtered the galaxy map in game for a system with the appropriate conditions to spawn HGEs that should have farmers in them, essentially a system in outbreak with as high a population as I could get. Having applied the filter I immediately found a purple speck on the galaxy map, headed to it, scanned the nav beacon, found one HGE in the system, headed to it, dropped in and this my dear assembled commanders is what I found. The video freezes at that point for some significant time because I'm screaming at the rest of the household to come and see what I've just found. In total there were 40 potential scoops there, each one giving 3 farmers each. Getting away from the value of the farmers in their own right, a haul like that will significantly help populate the rest of your appropriate tier manufactured materials when you hit a material trader with it. I repeated this process when looking for core dynamics composites and got almost exactly the same result. They were just as easy to find and they were in abundance in the singular HGE that spawned. I'm pleased to report that that time however I managed to not scream. Frontier made a point on their livestream on Wednesday of mentioning the Jameson crash site, a very popular destination for those looking for encoded ship materials. Where there were 4 scan points at the site there are now 9, the locations of which you can see highlighted on screen now. The amount of data coming from each scan has also been significantly increased with anywhere up to 16 or more units being downloaded depending on the encoded material type you get. Again significant value in its own right, take it to a material trader however and so it goes on. When it comes to on foot engineering it's an ever so slightly different flavour of picture. Thus far I've not seen any instances of a deluge of materials when raiding a site as best I can determine the drop rates at settlements if they have changed haven't changed by a significant degree but more testing really is needed there. Where we are definitely detecting a difference however is in two key places. The variety of on foot materials available from completing on foot missions has been increased, that is very noticeable and also as I mentioned at the top of this piece I was able to sometimes gain very significant quantities of some materials from negotiating mission rewards up with NPCs in orbital starports that I had a good rep with. Overall the quantity of most individual on foot materials available as mission rewards may have been increased somewhat but again it hasn't been increased so high that it's raining settlement defence plans. All these elements when it comes to Odyssey engineering have to be taken into account with where the really noticeable difference is and that's in the material cost of upgrades and modifications. In broad strokes terms when it comes to spacesuit upgrades for example the difference is quite stark. 
Here you can see the same suit upgrade shown in the current game and then under the engineering revamp. Gone completely is the requirement for a regular supply of power regulators to upgrade your suits and other material requirements have all been slashed by well over 50%. The story is essentially the same for weapon upgrades a couple of examples of which you can see on screen now. And the material costs for modifications at the engineers themselves have similarly been reduced. Again two representative examples of which you can see on screen. And these reductions are reflected right across the entire spectrum of suit and equipment modifications. From what we've witnessed here since we started looking at the engineering revamp here's what we think FDEV are trying to achieve aside from just making engineering more accessible to more players. A lot of the accepted wisdom in the current game will tell you that the best way to get any particular flavour of material is to visit a specific type of POI, instance or settlement and run that particular thing over and over again until darkness overtakes your very soul and in a lot of cases that has unfortunately been the only way to efficiently gather a lot of the games materials in anything approaching a reasonable timeframe. With the incoming engineering revamp it appears that Frontier are keen to push players more toward running missions and using material traders and bartenders to get what is needed whilst also reducing the RNG and overall material requirement. For want of a better expression giving players more of a reason to engage with the games more contenty type content than perhaps they had before outside of running BGS based operations. There are still, as we've shown, instances where seeking out a particular flavour of POI such as a high grade emission will give you the rewards you're after but when you do follow that path you will likely absolutely find the thing you're after in such abundance that you shouldn't feel the need to re-log over and over again. There are of course multiple reasons why FDEV have taken this approach. I do think that one of them is the importance that we suspect running missions and BGS activity is about to have in the coming PowerPlay 2.0 update. Even if a player isn't directly involved in an active BGS situation when they're completing missions they are sometimes unknowingly, positively or negatively affecting someone else's BGS activity and all of that helps drive engagement in the game and keeps the bubble and colonia more dynamic. How you feel about the engineering changes is of course going to be entirely driven by your current engagement with both engineering and the game as a whole. I personally welcome engineering becoming more accessible to more people but I also wouldn't want it to be as simple as an across the counter purchase with credits. From what I can see there is still a degree of legwork and moving about the galaxy, visiting different NPCs and situations required and there does seem to be more of a reason to engage with missions and material traders to get what you need without it being needlessly difficult and time consuming. I would hazard that there should be much more of a chance to engage with the game in a meaningful way that happens to result in you getting materials rather than mind numbing, dare I say it, grindy material gathering becoming your entire game which is definitely not a healthy way to go. The Type 8 update including the engineering revamp launches into the game this coming Wednesday the 7th of August. Are you tempted to try out engineering where you've avoided it before? Are you surprised by how far reaching the changes are and are you now tempted to return to an engineering project that you'd previously abandoned? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. 